Welcome to the Video Workbench Classic Series Instructional Video, Basic Modeling. This video is for the absolute beginner and for those wanting to review their basic skills. It covers everything you need to get going with your first kit, from choosing a place to build, to building and sub-assemblies, painting and applying decals, and dozens of useful tips no matter what your skill level. Even though originally produced in 1992, the techniques used in this video still cover everything you need to get going with your model kit. The examples shown here really haven't changed too much. There is no definitive way of building a model kit. Everyone has their own way of doing things, and with time, so will you. This video teaches dozens of useful tips, no matter what your skill level, including what I consider the three important T's of model kit building tips, tools, and techniques. I would like to talk a little bit about the instructor in this video, Chuck Davenport. He is a former United States Air Force navigator who made extensive use of his models and photography during his military career. He's used his model kit photos for intelligence briefings and often fooled experienced aviation officers. His model kit photographs have appeared in trade magazines such as the Journal of the International Plastic Modeler Society and Fine Scale Modeler, just to name a few. I hope by watching this video that you walk away with a better knowledge of how to safely and correctly assemble a plastic model kit, along with having found or coming back into a hobby that is very fun and rewarding. Thank you and enjoy. Man, I can think of something better than this. Isn't it better to think of it in your own head than to have some video screen tell you that you're having fun? Yeah, I never thought of it that way. Where am I? Your imagination. I'm going to show you how building models can be a lot more fun for the mind than just sitting around punching computer keys. Is that the truck I was driving? <laughs> yeah, it sure is. You want to build one just like it? Yeah. Okay, well let's get to it. Here you go. Before you even open up the box, you've got to select a place to build. Well, I don't have a place like this, and if I get glue on the table, my mom will kill me. Ask mom or dad for a place to build that's well ventilated or near a window that can be opened, and lay out newspaper or a piece of cardboard. Open the kit box using a sharp knife or scissors. You may have to open plastic bags to get all your kit parts out of the box. Check to see if all the parts are included. It's very rare, but sometimes a part will break off in the factory during production. If you're missing a part, the instruction sheet has an address to write for a replacement part. The next step is to read the instructions all the way through. They contain helpful modeling hints and describe the steps in building the model. If you prepare well before building, you will have an easier time and much more fun. It's important that you wash the kit parts in warm, soapy water. This is to remove oily mold release agents used at the factory to get the plastic trees out of the hot molds. Your paint won't stick to the plastic if you leave this oily mold release on your parts. After washing, let the parts air dry. 
lay out all the things you'll need so that you can easily find them while you're building. The tools you'll need are a hobby knife, snips or shears like this tester sprue cutter, glue, tweezers for picking up small parts, masking tape, rubber bands, a water bowl for decals, kit parts and your instructions. This handy tester's tool and paint organizer keeps everything in order on your desk, which is really convenient if you only have a small area to work in. Okay, we're ready to start building. How do you turn this box of parts into that cool truck? Oh, well that's easy. We start by building sub-assemblies. A sub-assembly is a kit within a kit. You can build a wheel, and while you're waiting for it to dry, you can work on the engine. While the engine dries, you can work on the dashboard, or whatever you like. But before you build sub-assemblies, you have to prepare the parts. Begin by locating the parts for each section. Each part on the tree has a number that corresponds to the picture in the instructions. Some parts are difficult to identify, so use the picture in the instructions to compare the parts on the tree. Some parts have a definite left and right side. Make sure you don't mix them up. You can mark them with a piece of tape. Before you build each sub-assembly, look carefully at the instructions to find out which parts you'll need. Don't remove parts from the trees until you're ready to glue them together. When you're ready to remove a part from the tree, don't twist off the part. This will tear the plastic part and leave a ragged edge, and it might even ruin the part. Cut the parts from the tree with a hobby knife or this tester's sprue cutter. Remember, don't cut off any parts until you're ready to glue them. Always wear eye protection when you're cutting plastic. Some parts may have some excess plastic called flash on them. Trim this away with your tester's hobby knife. But first, check the instructions to make sure you aren't cutting something that should be there. Many parts have mold lines. Remove these with a hobby knife or sandpaper because the real truck doesn't have them. Your final step is to remove the chrome plating from the surfaces that will be glued because glue will not stick to chrome. Compare the chrome part to the instructions to see where the chrome must be removed. Before you actually put any glue on the parts, dry fit the parts to make sure they go together like they should. Dry fitting means Put the parts together without glue. When you're sure the parts fit together correctly, you can then glue them together. Glue for plastic models comes in two forms, tube glue or liquid glue in this handy brush bottle or tester's needle applicator. When you're ready to glue, don't just squirt the glue out of the tube. It's messy and too much glue will actually ruin your model. Model cement is an acid that melts plastic together. Use too much and you'll just end up with a blob of melted plastic. Instead, put glue on your model with a toothpick. If you use the tester's needle applicator, you can easily control how much glue comes out. With liquid cement, put the two parts together and flow a small amount of glue into the seam. Press the part firmly together. If glue squeezes out, don't wipe it away. Just leave it alone. The next day, when it's completely dry, you can trim it away with a hobby knife, just like it was a piece of plastic flash. Use a piece of masking tape or a rubber band to hold the part firmly together. Plastic model cement takes a full day to dry completely. These Lindbergh 120th scale car and truck kits are really big yet easy to assemble if you follow the instructions. The broken lines show you how and where each part goes. Remember, dry fit your parts without cement before gluing them together. Small parts can be tricky. Use a pair of tweezers to hold the part. If the part is really small, put some Play-Doh on the end of a toothpick to hold the part while you glue it. After a few minutes, the glue will be just dry enough to hold the part so you can pull away the Play-Doh. 
Remember, it takes 24 hours for the glue to completely dry. The trickiest parts to glue are the clear parts like windshields or canopies of airplanes. You can accidentally goof up and get glue smudges on the clear plastic. Here's an easy way to glue windshields that even professional builders use. Hold the clear parts with dabs of Elmer's white glue. If you smudge white glue, it dries clear and you can clean Elmer's glue with water. Elmer's glue only holds the clear part in place. It doesn't actually cement it like your plastic model glue. So, if you play with your model, the clear parts may fall off. To hold clear parts permanently in place, use a toothpick to apply model cement. These Lindbergh trucks are molded in a glossy plastic that doesn't need painting. To get rid of these scuff marks, use a soft rag and a little dab of auto polish or wax. A little rubbing and no more scuff marks. Next, rub the plastic again, hard and fast, with a clean, soft rag. This will shine up the plastic for a great looking finish. The finishing touch for your models is the decals. Each decal, like this instrument cluster, is identified by number on the instruction sheet. Cut each decal from the sheet only when you need it. Use a pair of tweezers to dip the decal in warm water for about 10 seconds. Then pull the decal out and let set for 30 seconds. Using the tweezers, Position the decal in the right spot. Use a soft brush to hold one end of the decal and pull the backing paper away. Use a brush moistened in water to move the decal into position and then blot the excess water with a paper towel. Careful, use a light touch or the decal will slide away. Let the decal dry for a day. Some decals have to stick to curved surfaces or cover gaps. To get the decal to lay down over the curves and bumps on the model, brush on Tester's Model Master decal set while the decal is still wet. The decal really wrinkles when you use decal set. Don't touch the decal and don't worry. Here, you can see how the decal dries over a period of hours. Normally, after the decals are dry, you can call the model complete. But if you'd like to try your hand at painting, I can teach you some of the basics. Great. Okay. The great thing is that you can paint a car or truck any color you want. Airplanes, tanks, or ships generally have to be painted in certain colors to be accurate. So check your instruction sheet or box top art for ideas on colors to paint your kit. There are a number of paints available. I recommend either Tester's Model Master enamel paints or their new Colors by Boyd enamel paints. Both come in either bottles or spray cans. Tester's makes a range of wide to narrow high quality brushes. Wide brushes cover a large surface area and smaller brushes are used to detail small parts. Mix the paint thoroughly. Cut a piece of plastic sprue from the parts tree and use it to stir the paint pigment from the bottom of the bottle. Then, shake the bottle for about a minute to mix the paint. Before dipping your brush in paint, prime the ferrule with thinner. Blot the excess thinner on a paper towel. Dip the brush about halfway into the paint. Try not to get the paint on the ferrule. If you do, stop and clean it off. Paint in straight strokes, allowing the paint to flow onto the part. Do not brush back and forth or over paint. This ruins the paint job. Paint the parts like you built them in sub-assemblies. Use toothpicks, tape, or tweezers to hold small parts while you paint them. Let the paint dry for 24 hours before touching the part. When done painting, you must clean your brush. If you take care of your brushes, they'll last for years. To clean the brush, Pour a small amount of thinner into a small container. Dip the brush in the thinner and then allow the paint to drain onto a paper towel. Repeat this process until there is no color left in the brush. Never pull on the bristles. 
you will ruin the brush. To protect the brush till the next time you need it, set it upright or wrap it in a piece of paper towel. Painted parts won't stick together well with glue. Make sure you scrape away the paint before you apply glue. Sean, if you want to go one step further, you can try spray painting the body a different color. Spray painting the house? Paint will go everywhere. My mom will kill me again. No, she won't. Ask for permission to spray in an enclosed area like a garage. And use a cardboard box. And lay out some newspaper on a table and on a floor to catch the overspray. When you're spraying enamel paints, always wear a protective mask. After you have washed the body as I described earlier, mount it on a spray can using tape. Spray on three coats of Tester's gray primer. Do this by keeping the can about 12 inches from the model. Begin spraying a few inches to one side of the part, then move past the part, stopping a few inches past the other side. Let each coat dry for about 20 minutes, then spray the next coat. Let the final coat dry overnight before spraying the color coat. Spray the color coat the same way you sprayed on the primer, by putting on three light coats. Careful though, too much paint and the color will run. Now this takes some practice, so don't be discouraged if it isn't perfect the first few times. After the last coat dries for three days, put on your decals. Let the decals dry a day. Then protect your finish by spraying on a coat of Tester's Clear Gloss Enamel. What a cool truck. That's right, Sean. With your imagination, you can build a kit that'll take you anywhere from the Jurassic period to the sky, to the sea.